you doing in my swamp? <laughs> Hi. So the other day I was scrolling through Instagram reels as one does. W one popped up that caught my interest, which I guess I'll just play. We all had a crush on Shrek growing up, but I wanted a version of him that called me a good girl and ducked me in the blood of my enemies. So I took it in my own hands and I wrote a loose Shrek retelling. And I truly thought for the first time, wow, the Instagram algorithm has gotten it right. It got it right because normally it is like my explore page. It's a lot of like uh, porn, but it's also a lot of like conservatives and like people that are freaking out about woke shooting Bud Light cans with their machine guns, which is very not me. I want to put that out there. That's not the type of person I am. I don't know what. Okay, so I got it. <laughs> Get in my swamp, an ogre love story by G. M. Fairy. So this is like a fan fiction kind of inspired by Shrek, the ogre from the animated movies. Um, which was like growing up, being born in the early 2000s, fucking huge part of my life, humongous part of my life. So I thought it might be fun as an adult to experience Shrek in a very different way. Let's just say that. <laughs> So this is about Leona, who stumbles upon Beck and becomes his prisoner. She's determined to get away, but it doesn't take long for things to start heating up between the two. Beck is trying to protect her, and Leona can't help her body's reaction to the buff green monster. The lines between captive and captor become blurry, and the passion becomes a raging fire neither of them can put out. Sounds great. And I thought it could be fun if together we just read this little fun, less than 200 pages, little story together. And we could experience what I'm expecting to be a masterpiece together. So it's currently like 1am, so I might start this tonight. But tomorrow, bright and early, I plan on starting this. And just kind of giving you the highlights of Get In My Swamp, an ogre love story. Because that could be fun. So, I just started. I just want to read you the first sentence. <laughs> Most young women don't imagine their bachelorette party at a swamp in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, Florida. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't. I don't live in Florida, so I don't really live by a swamp. But I thought it would be fun if I just came to this like little lagoon. Um, chill the fuck out, man. Leo is going crazy swimming. Look at him go! Go, 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 go. <laughs> but this is so Shrek-y. Like, look at the green, clear water. Got like a little bit of a swamp over here. Logs. Slimy logs. And I'm gonna go swimming. I think I'm on page like 30. I think I'll be able to finish it today. Can you chill the fuck out? It's quite shocking so far. <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> Thank you. 
Sorry, this is so embarrassing. I'm currently cooking some yam fries in the hot air fryer. My mom only calls it. <laughs> My mom never says just air fryer. She only says hot air fryer. <laughs> I'm sure it's a surprise to a lot of y'all that I have a mom because I get a lot of comments being like, is he real? Does he exist? No. Redact everything I just said. I am asexually reproduced. I just like form out of mud and dirt. Um, <clears throat> and I'm immortal. But I'm currently on page 50. It's the next day. I got home from the lake yesterday and I had a massive headache and I just, just needed to chill. <laughs> and I just wanna quickly kind of go over what is occurring. So we have Leona and Beck. Leona is on her bachelorette party, but her fiance's sister is her best woman. Whatever the housemaid. What? What, I'm gonna go check on these french fries. <laughs> it's got five more minutes. So her soon-to-be sister-in-law is her best woman. I don't know, bridesmaid? Yeah, and no. What is it called? And she is like a LA, Los Angeles, health freak, very like, spiritual very like privileged like she's got time to like buy crystals and fill her life with like health and wellness because she's a privileged wealthy white woman sorry <laughs> and she decides to plan this bachelorette party in a swamp a silent swamp retreat and leona is like fuck this bitch but like I'm getting that bag because she's very poor and she's just like faking it till she makes it by marrying this man who's very wealthy. He's in like real estate or something. The family's very wealthy. So she just goes along with it. But the entire time she's like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, which it is very stupid. A silent retreat for a bachelorette party. But like, it's fun. You gotta admit, it's camp. It's campy. So she's in the swamp retreat. She gets fed up one night and decides to go for a walk. Now, Beck is an ogre. Just sort of like seven foot tall green guy with like tons of muscles. Like Shrek, but sexy as hell. And it's kind of like the Smurfs. Like they live in this community of mutants. Like there's gnomes and senators that live in this swamp. And it's just like this very tight knit community, but they don't want humans to know about them. That's like the number one rule. And sometimes humans will come into the swamp and they just kill them and eat them. But Leona goes out into the swamp, gets lost, stumbles upon this little shack, and she thinks, oh, there's, there's gonna be a grandma and they're like making cookies and she's gonna help me. Runs toward it, falls in his trap, and he goes out to see her, picks her up, takes her inside, puts her in his cage that he has, that he stores livestock in. It says that he likes his meat fresh, so he keeps a cage beside his bed. It says that they have Wi-Fi and cable. I don't know how the fuck that works. I don't know how you have Wi-Fi cable but you can't have like a freezer this monster smurf little community is so <laughs> like it has like a board it's like a little town Beck is super sexually attracted to this woman well more than like it alludes that he is kind of falling in love with her just kind of by looking at her like not a single word just looking at her being like wait have I heard her talk do I know her name no, but I, this is the woman of my dreams. She does describe herself at one point as, um, let me look for it. She says, I've got huge boobs, porn star lips, and an ass that won't quit. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um... All right, and that's only on page six. And then the monsters have this monster meeting because they heard Leona scream when she fell into Beck's trap. So they're like, we need this woman to die and we need you to kill her and eat her, Beck. Don't you want to do that? And he's like, no. I want to have sex with her. And they're like, okay, you can keep her as a slave. So that's kind of where we're at here. Leona and him are just in his little house. She's tied up in a cage. He is trying to win her over, I think. But Leona naturally hopes to escape. And her her plan to do that is um to seduce him, get out of the cage, figure out a way to flee this seven foot man. But the most recent chapter I read finishes with, I think the feminist gods will forgive me if I use a little seduction to get out of the clutches of an ogre. Fuck that guy. Operation Pussy Trap commence. So, so basically we've got Beck, who's trying to get this woman to fall in love with him, but then we've got Leona, who wants to fuck this guy in order to escape. Or not guy, ogre, sorry. I'll be completely honest, I'm really enjoying it.
Okay, so we've got some major updates. Major, major updates. I'm on page 115 and there's like 180 pages, I think. So they have been having a ton of sex. They've been, yeah, like falling in love, which I expected, obviously. The sex bits have been real fucking crazy. I don't read or like watch any like erotic things, media, because I'm just like not a fucking weird pervert like <laughs> so you guys <laughs> i'm just kidding but i do understand the appeal like i get it i get it it's or mm, it's leaving me speechless like it it, the, the, it it's very visceral and it's described in ways that are just like so fucking wild but also i mean this book is satire it's very clearly satire it's supposed to be funny so the sex scenes although yes they are like my eyes be bulging up my head, awooga awooga. There's also like little funny bits too, like she's talking about her pussy purring. <laughs> He's an ogre, he's seven feet tall, so he has got like a doll. The member is membering, it's like comedically big and she loves it. <sighs> yeah, for like about 50 pages they've just been like doing sex. She tried to escape, he caught her, pinned her to the ground and um, that was the first time they went all the way this is like so crazy like <laughs> i can't believe i'm putting this on the internet yeah they just did it on the ground and then they went back to his little shack and they did it again but through their little journey he ripped her clothing to pieces so he took her to the village the fairy tale village and he's buying her some clothes or gilda the fairy godmother runs a shop it's like the fairy godmother from shrek didn't she do something with clothing or something i don't know but while they were in there she went to the back to try on some clothes with gilda and Beck stayed at the front of the shop, and I don't remember his name, but a wizard, a young wizard. Now come on now. Walks through the doors. He's described as being young, hot. He doesn't have a, a silver gray beard, no droopy top hat, no robes. I'm imagining like Henry Cavill. Cavill? He Superman, Man of Steel. So my brain immediately is like, okay, so this is some competition. And we're about to enter a love triangle. But then he tells Beck, I keep on almost saying Shrek. The wizard tells Beck that he has a potion that could wipe her memory clean. Which means Leona could go back into the real world and just continue her life as it was before. And Beck doesn't want that. Beck wants to keep her. Beck loves this girl. And they're creating, I mean, I think it's only been like, I think it's only been one night. But things are moving quickly between Leona and Beck. So Beck takes the wizard by the scruff of his shirt and lifts him in the air and pretty much is like, this stays between us. You don't tell anyone about this potion you have, especially not Leona because he wants to keep her. But obviously what's gonna happen is she's gonna find out about this potion. She's gonna find out about Beck trapping her. And then Leona's gonna be like, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? Like Beck took her choice away, but she's falling in love with him. And at the end of the chapter, she comes out of the back with Gilda. She's got this fantastic new white dress that shows all her curves. And she says to Beck, okay, let's go home. And Beck thinks she just called it home. I don't know. This... <sighs> it's probably been like five minutes since that last clip. What I just read, that was like four, four pages. I don't think I've ever felt this from a book or any, like that was so incredibly disturbing. That was the <laughs> craziest shit, like, Who the fuck wrote this? Who is GM Fairy? I know that's a pseudonym. I need the legal name. I need the God-given Christian name because I've got a few things to say to, to them, to them, to her, to him. I don't know. Okay, let me try to explain. Leona is naked in a, like a, the lake and then 
this centaur, which is in the beginning of the book, it's Beck's friend. And it very clearly is like Donkey's counterpart. His name is Donnie, like from Shrek Donkey, Shrek's friend, the donkey. So he comes out of the forest. Leona is like, what the hell? What you, like I'm naked. And he says to her like, don't worry. We in this community are very open with nakedness. So she's like, oh, okay. And then randomly he just brings up Beck's parents. Beck's mom has been mentioned, I think once when Leona came to the village and they had the board meeting. They were like, well, what happened the last time with your mom that like we let a human in or whatever. And Leona is for some reason aware of this of the fact that Beck's parents are both dead and they died quite tragically. But then the centaur, Donnie, tells Leona how Beck's parents died, which is, it's not funny, it's like really crazy. This little human boy came up on the ogre's house when it was Beck as a child and then Beck's mom and dad were living in the shack. The mother, sees this little boy and thinks, oh crap, I don't want to kill a little boy. I'm going to take it back to the humans. She walks with the little boy outside of the swamp, but then the little boy's father isn't long behind. I guess they were hunting or I guess it's, I don't know, it's Florida. So everyone's got guns. So he shoots the mom, but the way Donnie says is... <laughs> Beck's dad heard the commotion and ran out to find his wife with her head blown off. And, I, and then shortly after that, Beck's dad shoots himself and he tells Leona that Beck is the one who found his dead body. So Leona's like, oh my god, fuck. But then absolutely out of nowhere, Donnie, like the donkey of this book, I'm making tries to R-A-P-E Leona out of nowhere. Beck hears this, runs, beats the shit out of Donnie. He gets covered in Donnie's blood and this turns Beck and Leona on and they have sex right beside Donnie's unconscious bloody body and they get covered in Donnie's blood. And it, the, it's, uh, The character development is real crazy. He was fucking his sister. <laughs> so. To make a long fucking story short, he was fucking his sister. <laughs> Beck gets freaked out about this situation with Donnie, and he thinks, damn, like, my, the community of mutants or monsters, whatever the fuck, are not gonna see you the way I see you, and this is gonna happen again. So you gotta take this memory loss potion and get the fuck out of here, because I love you. She doesn't take the memory loss potion, but she does leave. Let's just, she like storms out of the shack and is sitting on a rock pondering what she should do, because she's thinking, do I love Beck? Do I not love Beck? Do I only love Beck? Because it's like Stockholm Syndrome. And as she's thinking this, she hears someone calling her name and it's not Beck. Turns out it's Lawrence, her fiance. So he finds her and says, you're coming with me. And she thinks maybe some time away from Beck will be good. It will show me whether or not I love him. Do I love him because I'm here and I can't leave or do I actually love him? So she goes back to LA with Lawrence without saying goodbye to Beck. After a few days of living in LA, she decides to go surprise Veronica, Lawrence's sister with lunch, some poke bowls, unannounced, unwelcomed, goes into her apartment and finds Lawrence in bed with his sister. I'm telling you, HBO, HBO, HBO. Y'all love your incest. This is the next big HBO miniseries. I'm telling you, Emmy award winning. <sighs> I got like 20 pages left. I think she's just gonna go back to Florida and spend the rest of her life with Beck. But we'll see. This is like, this has got me. This, like, this is.
So, last night I... <sighs> Last night I finished Get In My Swamp, An Ogre Love Story by G.M. Ferry, and I just wanted to quickly tell you how it ends and give my overall thoughts on my experience with this book. So, Leona finds out that Beck is having sex with his sister, half-sister, sorry, and she is a woman with morals, you know? So she decides, I'm not marrying this fool. And she gets a studio apartment in Los Angeles. She says that she would go back to Florida to see Beck, but she doesn't have any money. So she's kind of just like trying her best in LA and I think she's planning to go back to Florida but then one night she's crying I think she's like touching herself thinking about Beck she hears a knock at the door and then all of a sudden the door uh, blows open and it's Beck uh, they immediately start having sex like right away very graphic very very detailed they're doing some new positions that um are very exciting to read about. But the entire time I'm just thinking, wait, this is a studio apartment. I think he like blew the door off his hinges and for like hours they just go at it. I think with the door just like wide open. So and then naturally you think, how'd he get there? He put sunglasses, a hat and a mask on and just went on a plane. I guess it's like during COVID time. So like a face mask, but his skin is still green. So, and then they just go back to the swamp and live happily ever after. Now, <laughs> this book, it left me speechless. I still don't know how to feel about it. I just, I know that I had a lot of fun. I know that it's meant to be satire. I'm like 95% sure. But there also is a lot of real aspects within it. Like this little world that Beck is a part of was honestly super interesting. It felt like something that I, cause like I used to write stories when I was a kid, like fairy tale, fantasy stories. And it felt very much like that. Like I was reading it and I was like, this is totally something I would have wrote when I was 10. Minus all the hardcore sex. The writing was nothing special. There was definitely a couple grammatical errors. It felt like I was reading the writing of a 10 year old me. The erotic bits were really, again, I'll say I don't read any erotica. That's not a world that I'm a part of, but I feel like they were done really well. They were fucking crazy. Like, I don't know what else to say about them. They just like were so graphic, so in detail, but also at the same time, it was always quite funny. Like, it's like, this is a giant green green ogre and like a supermodel in a swamp. I don't know, it just like was a mix of so many things and in such a short amount of pages, like it's only like 180 pages, my brain was just going everywhere. The one constant was that it was going to return to sex, like, <laughs> and that sex was gonna last like 10 to 20 pages. But then the story, it progressed in a way that I was really quite fond of and it kept my interest the entire time. Like it is sensory overload. And I, I truly genuinely want this to be adapted into like a movie or of mini series so bad like i think it could be so good I think like the idol on hbo i've not seen a single episode of that show i've heard a lot about it and i feel like it has the same vibe as this like funny dramatic disturbing sexy as hell <laughs> nasty and fucked up but also like kind of heartwarming and bad but like good i don't know um i guess i'll just say thanks for watching